Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Apache Command CLI. So the command line interface is what we are going to work with and this tooling parses your command line and gives you valuable options that you can use in your Java program. And we're gonna build something with it. So let's jump over to my screen here and let's start by creating a new project. So new project and we can call this, it's a Maven project and we can call this uh, command uh, CLI, just call it CLI. Let's go there and in this video with window. So here we have my new project. I need a dependency. So let's add dependencies. And the dependency I want is commons CLI. So this is the Apache common CLI from uh, the uh, Maven repository. So when we have that installed, we can go here and start creating a new Java class. So Java class and just call it CLI. For instance, and we do a main here and let's Say that we have some configuration here. We can run this to start with and then we will get the run configuration and let's put in some arguments here. We can say that we want to add something and we want to add 10 with 11. So that's a very simple command line interface. If we run this, we should here get some arguments. So if we do a loop, and loop through these arguments here and then uh, print that out s out and if we do that and run this again we should get all those command line arguments add 10 11. so if we do a very simple program here if the uh, first argument uh, equals add, so we have add here equals, if that is the case, then we will take uh, int b will be equal to, let's say add a equal to integer parse int arg1, uh, and then we will do the same with the second argument here, so we'll have two arguments, and then we will do a plus b and print that out. If we run this, we should get the response of 21. So we have an, a function here that will add two things together. And, and, and that's pretty simple when you're creating a simple application and doing something really simple <laughs> that with not a lot of different features in it but if you are like me things tend to grow either you create a small tool that you reuse for a while and then throw away and sometimes you build a tool for six seven years and the opportunities or the options available to you are really large and it grows out of proportion and is is too much to even think about and then you need some way to handle your inputs in a measured manner so let's create something here we create um, static final and this will be an option so this is an option of input and let's call this arg um, um, add let's call it that and then new option uh, and these are uh, options in the uh, commons CLI and here we will put in first off the option um, short argument so let's put that in we can say that there should be a and then we need the long option let's take add for that and then we will need a description and, and it has a lot of different ways to create this. So um, add uh, two numbers together. And then we can have even more if we like after that. We can say false. Um, so that is long options. No, 
And we need to put the force false before here, so false. So this is if it has any arguments to it. So let's create two more um, and call this one input one and input two. Let's say that we have the short, yeah, we want to call these A and B, right? So then we will have, um, now we don't want to use those at all. I want to have multiple ways of doing things. So uh, sub mul uh, div. So let's go with that. So let's use the letters S, M and D and division addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So add together, subtract two numbers. Multiply two numbers and divide, divide two numbers. Let's go with that. So now we have a couple of arguments here. Now we want a way to parse these. So we create an, a simple class called uh, command line parser. Command line parser. CLP, new command line parser. Nope. Uh, new default parser. So that's the default parser that they usually use. And then we use this and we will parse some options here. And uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think we will create a list of options first. So uh, let's do that. So options, so it actually knows what we have to work with, options. And this options, we want to add the option, R add, and then we will add all the ones that we created up here. So we have those in an options list. Now we can use this CLP to parse with the options and the arguments. And this will throw an, uh, an exception. So let's just catch that and print the stack trace. So very simple little thing here and that will in give us a command line. Now we have a command line and this we can work with. So let's start with what we want to do. So if this command line has the option of argument add then we want to do something else if uh, oh, has the command, and we need to use the long option. And then we can do the same here for if it has the subtract. And then we will do a couple more. Mull and divide. And else we will print out the command line. So here and prepared a little, oh, we can try a little function here, private, static, void, and print, help with options, options, like that. And then we will want a help formatter, a new help formatter. We want a print writer. 
print writer for the system out. And then we can first off print the application name, so uh, math app. And then we can actually say what version this is, so math uh, class get package and get implementation version. And then we can do a print line again, and then we can do a print, oh, formatter, print uh, usage to this PV, and we can say that we want to have Java, jar, and math app, jar, and we want some options, and then input one, input two. So that's the way we will use this. And we can take the formatter and print options to PV with the width of 100 again. The options and left pad 2 and description pad 5. And we do a close. So now we have written the print help function. And if we haven't added any of this, these, we will print the options down here. So let's do some, um, some work here. We can also, let's say that we have this CL get arg list. And if the size of that is smaller than two, then we will print to help as well, because then we don't have the two options that we want. So here we will do a system exit of minus one, just to say that that is not a valid input. Then we can say that we want to have these two arguments, and let's say a equals uh, integer parse int the cl get arg list, and we will get the first argument. So that's our A, and we do the same for our B. So now we can do A plus B and print that out. We can do A minus B and print that out. We can do A times B and print that out. And A divided by B and print that out. So now we have written a little bit of a program here. It not, it's not that... Um, Impressive, but uh, let's see here. We have a number format exception. Uh, where do we have that? There. And that's because our first argument is not a number. So, we can do a try here. If we don't have the correct input here, do a print stack trace but we can also do a print help with the options and then we will do a system exit here as well um, and if we want uh, let's see here oh um, yeah int a Int B. Let's do that. Just to have those available. So now we should get an output here. We get an error down here and we get the input that is required. And if we want, and this looks quite nice, right? Um, and if we want, we can actually add some more description up here. Number one number two. So it's very, very um, well documented that these should be numbers. If we go out in here and remove add now, and we will run it again, we will just get this error that we haven't supplied any 
options that we want to run. And you see here that you have a long option and a short option. So either dash A is a valid option or dash dash addition. So if we go in here and say dash dash uh, addition and you see here that we said that options should be first, but that is not required because all the options that started with a dash or a dash dash will be interpreted as some kind of option. And the numbers uh, up here, they are just there to give extra arguments. So if we like, we can just run this and we see that we get an addition of those two. But we also want to um, say that we want to arg uh, minus so let's do a one of those and we don't have any any of those and just say minus and this should have an argument so we, we can try that out as well um, after result do a minus operation. I'm, I'm just <laughs> figuring out things on the fly here. So let's add this just to show how to work with arguments as well. So we have that arguments minus. And let's say that we want to uh, add it in here. So uh, FCL. Um, uh, now we can we can say that we want to do that afterwards. So if CL has the option of argument minus, we get the long option there. We can actually go in here and say CL get um, option value, and then arg minus get long option. So this is a string with that value and then we can take that value and uh, do a minus on let's say a so um, uh, int sum equals to a minus integer parse int val Let's do that and then some print that out. So now when we run this, we will not, not get any extra uh, information here. But if we go in and say dash dash minus five, so we do a minus of five of the first value 10, we'll get five out. So that's how you are using these different options that you can turn in and if we have something wrong here, so we will remove this addition again. And that was a required parameter. We'll get this out again. And you see here that minus, it requires an argument. So you see that clearly. And we don't have any short argument because we put that as null up here. So that's not some option that we have. We can't use a short argument. We need to use the long argument of minus here and we need to put in an extra value after that on our command line. This was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have worked with the Pash Common CLI before or if you have used another framework to read your command line interface, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.